The High Court has today refused an application by Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, to have the defence struck out, or for summary judgment, in the case against Associated Newspapers Limited. But if you're new to my channel, I'm Daniel Shensmith, a barrister of England and Wales. Please do hit that subscribe button if you find my content useful. I would really appreciate that. So as I seem to make a habit of saying on this channel, you may be confused as to which case this is and what it's all about. So I would like to provide you a brief summary by referring to the press summary by the courts and tribunals judiciary. Uh, so this case against Associated Newspapers Limited by Prince Harry was about this article here, which said revealed how Harry tried to keep his legal fight over bodyguards secret. Then minutes after MOS broke the story, his PR machine tried to put out a positive spin on the dispute. This was published in The Mail on Sunday on the 20th of February 2022. This, of course, was regarding the judicial review claim for the government's decision not to provide the public funded blanket security, which we've talked about in other videos. I've already given you some of my views on that over on Black Belt Secrets, linked below why I think it should be a good idea and some reasons it might not and might be more suited to a bespoke approach. But again, just my opinions. And just as a brief interlude, I know many of you are interested whenever I'm involved in a claim of some sort. I am currently involved in a claim for diesel emissions for a vehicle that I bought which has allegedly got a cheat device to falsify the emissions readouts which is very ironic considering the whole ULEZ scandal which I have a video coming out very shortly on. If you bought a vehicle between 2008 and 2018 on any one of these manufacturers, you might also be eligible for a claim. Between 25 and 75% of the value of the vehicle or the purchase price of the vehicle. The average value for these claims is of course in the thousands. And I've teamed up with a company that will help you to check your eligibility and to run your case without any cost to you at the link in the description below. As I've said before, I would never bring you any offer that I wouldn't use myself. So check out the link in the description below. And now back to the video. The press summary here also refers to the earlier decision of the court, which which was on the meaning of the article, because in any case for libel, there'll be initial hearings to decide what the ordinary meaning of the words complained of reflects. And this was broken into three parts. And Prince Harry, uh, after this decision of the court, changed his claim to raise a complaint only about the second two of these three meanings. So we'll focus on B and C. B, the meaning being the Duke of Sussex was responsible for public statements issued on his behalf which claimed that he was willing to pay for police protection in the UK and that his legal challenge was to the government's refusal to permit him to do so, whereas the true position, as revealed in documents filed in the legal proceedings, was that he only made the offer to pay after proceedings had commenced. And the meaning in C was that as such, the Duke of Sussex was responsible for attempting to mislead and confuse the public as to the true position, which was ironic given that he now held a public role in tackling misinformation. The court emphasized here that the bits underlined were expression of opinion. So the newspaper's defense was one of the statutory defense of honest opinion set out in Section 3 of the Defamation Act 2013. This is available with certain criteria, which are referenced in the judgment over here at paragraph 37. Firstly, for the defense of honest opinion to apply, the first condition is that it must be a statement of opinion rather than fact, of course. Secondly, that the statement complained of indicated whether, either in general or specific terms, the basis of that opinion. I've mentioned before, you cannot just say my opinion of this person is X without providing the reasoning as to why you form that opinion. So you must give some sort of reasoning. If, for example, you're expressing the opinion that somebody was a fraudster, you must provide a basis of that opinion, which may only be, for example, that they've been prosecuted for fraud. Certainly if they've been convicted of fraud, you can hold that opinion, but that is then the basis of your opinion. The third condition, which is one relevant to this case, is that an honest person could have held that opinion on the basis of any fact that existed at the time that statement complained of was published. So in other words, newspaper publishes a statement, which may well be an opinion, but then the legislation provides that a hypothetical third honest person could have held that opinion 
on the basis of any fact which existed at the time that statement complained of was published. And of course, the catch-all underneath here is that that defence is defeated if it's shown that the defendant did not hold that opinion, of course. Now, moving back to the press summary here. This dismissal application was for two things. They very often are. First of all, to strike out the defence. And secondly, for summary judgment. Now, for each of those in turn, first of all, the court has the power to strike out a statement of case, such as a defence, if that statement of case discloses no reasonable grounds for defending the claim. And for summary judgment, the court has the power to grant summary judgment if there is no real prospect of successfully defending the claim on that defence. Either of these have a similar effect. If the court strikes out the defence, then it ceases to exist. Then there is no defence to the claim. And with summary judgment, the court is making a judgment on the claim, but without it going to full trial. In this application, Prince Harry argued that a key fact relied upon by the defendant to support this defence, that he'd only made the offer to pay for his security after the proceedings had commenced, was wrong. And that he made an offer to pay at a meeting at Sandringham in January 2020 referred to as the Sandringham offer. And because of that, he argued that the defendant newspaper would not succeed in demonstrating the third condition for the defence of honest opinion. The third condition, remember, being that a honest third person could have held that opinion on the basis of any fact at the time. So in short, the court has refused Prince Harry's application for strikeout or summary judgment and that the case must go to trial. Now, whilst I emphasise that the court has not made any finding of fact, the court has ruled that the defendant newspaper has a real prospect at trial of demonstrating that the Duke of Sussex had not made an offer to the government to pay for his security before he began proceedings for judicial review. At trial, the court may find that the Sandringham offer is irrelevant to the defence of honest opinion. The court also held that the defence of honest opinion does not rely upon just one fact and that the defendant has a real prospect at trial of demonstrating at least one of the following facts. And then, if the defendant newspaper does establish these facts at trial, it has a real prospect of demonstrating the third element for honest opinion defence, that an honest person could hold the opinion that the Duke of Sussex was responsible for attempting to mislead and confuse the public as to the true position of his judicial review claim, and that this was ironic given that he now held a public role in tackling misinformation. So now there's going to be another hearing on the 12th of December where the court will look at the orders that should be made consequential to this judgment and the court will go through remaining pre-trial phases and unless that they're resolved in any other way will go to trial at some point in 2024. So hopefully that is a useful brief overview. It's another step forward in one of Prince Harry's cases which now looks set to go to trial sometime in 2024 where I expect associated newspapers will continue to defend it. Especially now they will doubtless consider this a significant win to avoid having their defence struck out or indeed summary judgment granted against them. So I hope you found that useful. Please do like the video and subscribe for more content. I really appreciate that. It helps my channel grow. And as always, I thank you for watching.